BGMC. The biblical truth lives here. scriptures foretold of the anointed one, Yeshua HaMashiach. The Messiah Yeshua came to call the people back to the truth of his word and to follow that righteous path. Yeshua then called Jewish men to be his disciples and after his death and resurrection those Jewish men told the world about the Jewish Messiah. Now after 2,000 years Beth Goyim Messianic congregation has that same calling of those Jewish men telling all people, both Jew and Gentile, about the proper ancient path, teaching the Route 66 King's Highway from Genesis through to Revelation, and how you need and can get back to the proper roots of the faith and a closer walk with God. Now, let's hear the message. Let's go get a blessing. Turn to the book of Bamidbar, Numbers chapter 35. Numbers chapter 35. This is message P147. P147. It is parash. Parash meaning portion of the Torah. Parash number 43. It is called Ma'a. Ma'sa'e. Ma'sa'e. Ma'sa'e means stages. Stages of going to things. Okay? We've done... In the past cycles, we've done chapter 33, we've done chapter 34. So in this particular cycle, for the next uh, uh, little bit of time here, we're going to try to go over some amazing stuff, dealing with a lot of numbers in the end of the book of Numbers. Okay? There's a lot of reasons that Jehovah does certain things. And what I find most intriguing about the scriptures is if you see something and you, you tend to then turn it and look at it in different ways. You get a different look at Jehovah's personality. You get a different look at the, the intricacy of the Bible. See, after you get through one, one, one Torah cycle and you get to the second and third, you really want to start delving deeper into your knowledge base because you'll be able to start like, you know, I love, like, Brother Ed's questions. I think they're, they're wonderful. I, I could see that he's searching and seeking, and I love his heart in this question. So those are great questions. Okay, everybody should also do that when you're reading. Question God, not wrongly, but question him like, hey, I'm a student. Show me, teacher. And Jehovah will show you incredible things in his word. So here we're going to go through some, some parts of chapter 35 and we're going to look at the diamond and go well why does it say that let's look at it here let's look at it here why does it say this number what what does this number mean and by looking at the scriptures you truly begin to get a greater picture because remember we're made in Jehovah's image in Elohim's image so we should inquire because there is so much to him or them that we should desire to know and the more you know the the harder the world gets the, the worse things get, the more profound your knowledge is of him, the more ability you're going to have to get through these tough times that are coming on our lives. So let's look at chapter 35, and we're going to look at verses 1 through 5. Chapter 35 of Bamidbar, Numbers chapter 35, verses 1 through 5. In the plains of Moab, by the Yarden, across from Jericho, Jehovah said to Moshe, Order the people of Israel to give the living cities to live in, from, their heritage, from the heritage they will possess. And you are also to give the Lipaim some of the open land surrounding the cities. They are to have the cities to live in, while their open land will be for their livestock, for growing crops, and for all their animals. The open land around the cities you give to the Levim is to commence at the line drawn around the city wall, 1,500 feet outside it, and it's to extend outward from there. Measure 3,000 feet outward from the city wall to the east, south, west, and north. With the city in the center, 
the space between the 1,500 foot line and the 3,000 foot line will be their open land around the cities. Okay, once again, we're seeing a rectangle. So, you know, those of you that are getting into some geometry and higher math things, such as, you know, square roots and stuff like that, um, once you start getting into the geometry of things, it really is quite fascinating, like what the square root of 1,500 would be or what the square root of 3,000 would be. It's those type of things that really draw you in because we're going to look at numbers, and numbers have incredible power to the Lord, okay? He's really a great mathematician. So what you're seeing is around this rectangle, the people that are ministering to Jehovah, they're going to be getting the land surrounding it so that they would, you know, be the buffer between sin coming in that city. They would be able to be, it's not theirs per se with the, you know, Benjamin got this land, Yehuda got this land, Ephraim got this land, but the Litvaim did not get their own land, so you had to give them this, this land surrounding and in your towns, okay? So it, you wanted them in your town because prior to Yeshua coming, this is the main difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament is you had somebody to be the, the conduit between you and heaven. So here we're seeing a certain area by the walls, okay, 1,500 feet outside it, and then 3,000 feet in another area, okay? So we're going to go past that a little bit because there's other, some, some other things I want to go, like in verse 6 and 7. We're going to spend a fair amount of time, I think most of the prosh tonight, in these two verses because we want to see the diamond, verse 6 and 7. Numbers 35, Bamidbar 35, verse 6 and 7. The cities you give to the Litvaim are to be six cities of refuge, to which you permit the person who kills somebody to flee to, flee to plus an additional 42 cities. Thus, you will give the Litvaim 48 cities with their surrounding open land. So let's first look at the basic of what we see here. Six, okay? The first part we're going to look at is six. Well, why six, okay? Well, everybody knows the basic of number six, the basic of number six, is that when did Jehovah create man? When did Jehovah create man? He created man on the fourth day, right? On the fourth day. No. Uh, when, did, when did Jehovah create man there, BDM? On, on the 66th day? On the sixth day, she says. Yes, on the sixth day. So six is the number of man. So if, the, if somebody kills somebody until they are found guilty or not guilty, they have a city of refuge to be able to come to. So here, the first number we're going to look at, at, at these three numbers, we're looking at six. So let us look, okay? Hold your place there, but we're going to go to a couple other scriptures, okay? Or actually, I'll just talk about them. But take your reference notes down, okay? Six symbolizes man, okay? Jehovah made man on the sixth day, and it also symbolizes a weakness, okay? Okay, because man is weak because they're no longer, um, they're not immortal. They, they come down, they live for a certain time, okay? Man was created on the sixth day. And six, six is the number of days that we're to labor. So if this per so let's start looking at building this, this diamond to look at. So here, if a person makes an error or whatever happens later in the chapter, we'll get into certain areas of murder versus killing. But until the person is convicted by two witnesses and the, and the leadership, he has a place to go. So here, six cities, the number of man is made that, so he has a refuge place. He has the number of frailty, the weakness, because something occurred to happen, and he's there to work for six days, okay? So you start to see that. Now, six is the number of years you are to work if you become a slave, and on the seventh, 
year you are set free. So we have six being the cities of refuge. So because you're weak, you've made an error, something occurred where you were involved in a murder until, or a killing until you were found out to be guilty. You have this weakness that occurred. You're working for six days. You now can be a slave up to six full years. So we begin to look at this diamond. Okay? What is the sixth commandment? What is the sixth commandment? What is the sixth commandment? Okay? You shall not murder. Okay? So here, you shall not murder six cities of refuge. You shouldn't have been involved with it. Now you got to uh, go to the city of refuge for possibly six years because it's coming into all this, things like that. Now we're looking at this diamond. See what Jehovah's saying. Six cities. You're weak. <coughs> Excuse me. You can be a slave for six years. Six is the number of year, days we work. The sixth commandment is thou shall not murder. Okay? Okay? Now, the sixth clause in the Our Father prayer is lead us not into hard temptation. Lead us not into sin. Temptation. So you see, look at this diamond that's being built. A temptation. Something occurred that something got out of hand. Because if you were working real hard on your six days, you wouldn't have time to get into this beef. Okay? Because you're supposed to be working. If you were a slave, you're trying to work off your debt, you wouldn't have time to get into this beef. And God created us on the sixth day. He said in the sixth commandment, don't murder. Now, our father in the Brit Hadashah, don't lead us into hard temptation. Okay? Now, something a little further that brings us a little, a greater understanding of this city of refuge or the darkness that comes with the city of refuge. How many hours was Yeshua on the cross? Ah, BDM's got it now. She's got the brain going. I know it's late. Okay, six hours from nine in the morning till three in the afternoon. Six hours. Okay, then we move on to the next part. Okay, six hours, nine to three. Okay, what is the number of the anti Messiah or the Antichrist? Six, six, six. Okay. Because he's a murderer. He's going to go into those cities of refuge and kill people. Okay? How many earthquakes are mentioned in the Bible? Six earthquakes. That's fascinating. So when you get involved in a murder or a killing, there's an earthquake. It's going to shake up your life. Six earthquakes, Exodus 19, verse 18, 1 Kings 19, 11, Amos 1, verse 1, Matthew 27, verse 54, and 28, verse 2, and Acts 16, verse 26, I'll say it again, Exodus 19, verse 18, 1 Kings 19, 11, Amos 1, verse 1, Matthew, Matthew, 27, verse 54, and 28, verse 2, and Acts, chapter 16, verse 26. So you see the picture that's being drawn here. It's all about this destructive things that could happen if you get involved with things like this. Now, let's turn to a scripture. Turn to Revelation 6, verse 6. Revelation... 6, verse 6. Huh? Revelation 6, verse 6. Revelation 6. Then I heard what sounded like a voice from among the four living beings say, Two pounds of wheat. 
for a day's wages, six pounds of barley for the same price, but don't damage the oil or the wine. Six pounds of barley for a day's wages. See, when you're in sin, you've murdered yourself by not following the Lord's commandments. There's redemption. But barley is the first thing that comes up after the winter. Okay? Six pounds of barley for the same price. Turn to John chapter 2, the Gospel of John chapter 2. Get in the picture? Some things that are going on, pretty fascinating. John chapter 2, Yeshua's first miracle. John chapter 2, verse 6. Isn't it interesting? Verse 6. John 2, verse 6. 2 plus 6 is 8. How many in total cities? 48. John 2, verse 6 says, Now six stone water jars were standing there for the Jewish ceremonial washing, each with the capacity of 20 to 30 gallons. This was at the wedding at Cana. Okay? So how many stone water jars? Six. For what? Ceremonial washing. Ceremonial washing. What was in the water for the ceremonial washing? The ashes of the red heifer, which causes a chemical reaction to happen with the water, and it helps you to get healthy. Go to the city of ref refuge before somebody kills you until we find out if the truth that you didn't murder, but there was an accident or something that happened. Now, let's go back to the book of Revelation. Revelation 6, verse 12. Revelation 6, verse 12. Hmm, 18. Number of life. 6 goes into 12 how many times? Twice. Divisible. Let's see what happens with the 6 and the bowls, the judgments, the seals. Then I watched as he broke the sixth seal, and there was a great earthquake. The sun turned black and sat as sackcloth worn in mourning, and the full moon became blood red. Boo! What seal was the earthquake that happened? One of the six times. Okay? One of the six times. So here the sixth seal deals with a destructive force that the Lord puts forth through the earth. Turn to Revelation 9. Revelation 9. Verse 14, 15. Revelation 9. Revelation 9. Verse 14 and 15. Revelation 9, verse 14, 15. Saying to the sixth angel, the one with the shofar, release the four angels that are bound at the great river Euphrates. And they were released. The four angels had been kept ready for the moment of this day and the month of year to kill a third of mankind. Which angel? The fifth angel? No. The seventh angel? No. The sixth angel, which brings judgment on the land. Six being the number of the refuge. Revelation 16, please. Revelation 16. Revelation 16. Verses 12 through 14. Revelation 16, verses 12 through 14. Revelation 16, verses 12 through 14. The sixth one poured out his bowl on the great Euph river Euphrates, and its water dried up in order to prepare the way for the kings from the east. I saw there, I saw three unclean spirits that looked like frogs. They came up from the mouth of the dragon, from the mouth of the beast, and from the mouth of the false prophet. They are miracle-working demonic spirits which go out to the kings of the whole inhabited world to assemble them for the war of the great day of Jehovah Sivaot. Which angel poured out judgment? The sixth angel poured out judgment. Okay, so we've looked at that part first now. We've gotten a pretty good picture Six is a lot of judgment going on. A lot of judgment going on. Okay? Now, let's go back to Numbers 35 
And look at verse 6 and 7 again. And then we're going to look at a certain, certain other number. You see the bigger picture that you do when you, you start to do these word studies and you try to figure out, well, okay, what does this mean? It means so much more than that surface, than that surface of what's going on. Numbers 35, Bamidbar 35, verse 6 and 7. The cities you give to the Levi'im are to be six cities of refuge, we've looked at that, to which you permit the person who kills someone to flee to, plus an additional 42 cities. Thus you will give the Levi'im 48 cities with their surrounding open land. Okay? So now we're going to look at 42. Now, 40 is the number of what? Completion. Completion, 2 is the number of father and son. Two people go out. So it's the number of completion, walking with the father and the son. Number of completion, walking with the father and the son. Now, it's a city of refuge, a place of like a tabernacle, a place of holiness until we figure out what's going on. And then if we find that, you're, that you did not do what was said, you're let free. Okay? But you can run into God's house, righteous run into it, and they are saved. So let's look at this 42. Let's look at this 42. Turn to Exodus chapter 26, verse 2. Exodus chapter 26, verse 2. Exodus chapter 26, verse 2. Let's start getting a, a bigger picture. we got the 6. Now we're doing another 42 cities. So let's get this. Well, why 42, not 48, 37, or why not 10? Okay, an additional 42. Each one is to be 42 feet long and 6 feet wide. All the sheets are to be the same size. So the sheets of the tabernacle, some of the sheets that were going over the top, were 42 feet long. The covering, the covering, the covering is 42 feet long. So here, you go. You, there's something against you. They think you've murdered somebody or killed somebody. You go to this city of refuge, you get God's covering until we found out that you've done it or that you're exonerated. So this covering of the tabernacle. Covering of the tabernacle. Okay? Let's see here. Now let's look at the book of Judges. Judges chapter 8. Judges chapter 8. Judges chapter 8, verse 26. Judges, Shaptim, Judges, chapter 8, verse 26. The gold earrings he requested weighed more than 42 pounds, and this doesn't include the crescent pendants and purple cloth worn by the kings of Midian, and the chains around their camel's necks, okay? So this booty that was being brought in was 42 pounds. So here, you're getting the opportunity to understand, well, you got the city of refuge, God's covering, then the booty is just 42 pounds, your life is very valuable, so we're looking at value, okay? 42 is a number of value, okay? 42 pounds of this stuff coming in in the book of Judges, okay? It's a value and a covering. 42 is a value and a covering. So if you get to one of these cities, these cities of refuge, the 6 and then the 42, you can be saved for at least a time period, okay? And uh, now, let's go to Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles, chapter twenty-two, verse two. Chapter twenty-two, Second Chronicles, chapter twenty-two, verse two. Second Chronicles, 
chapter 22, verse 2. Achazah was 42 years old when he began his reign, and he ruled for one year in Yerushalayim. His mother's name was Atal, uh, Atal Yahu, the daughter of Omri. So you see this judgment didn't go well because he didn't reign too long. So this 42 is a time is when we find out that you've done something not good, then you're dead. Okay? You're dead. Okay? So you got the covering until we find out. Your life is spared because it's valuable until we find out the truth. But then we get this 42, bang. Okay? And then, now, let's go to some other things that you might find even more fascinating. Revelation 11. Revelation 11, verse 2. Revelation 11, verse 2. Revelation 11, verse 2. 2, 2, 2. Revelation 11, verse 2. Revelation 11, verse 2. But the court outside the temple, leave that out. Don't measure it because it has been given to the goyim. And they will trample over the holy city for 42 months. 42 months. 42 the cities that are li likely to have a lot of dead people in it. So here, the goyim are trampling over the holy city for 42 months. Now we'll go one more, turn to chapter 13, verse 5. Revelation 13, verse 5. Revelation 13, verse 5. It was given a mouth speaking arrogant blasphemies, and it was given authority to act for 40 two months. Huh. Fascinating. 42 months. Isn't that the cities of refuge? God gives them a time. So I'll give you your time. Let people decide what they want to do. Let them investigate. For how long? 42 months. All right. Let's see what else we could get to. Go back to Numbers 35, please. Numbers 35. Numbers 35, verse 9 through 12. Hopefully you're learning something a little bit. Lots of numbers, but it's good to start looking bigger and see the picture that's being drawn for us. Okay? It's not just one little line. I know a lot of very small, narrow-minded people, well, you know, they just take one line of Scripture. No, you've got to look at much more. But Midbar 35, 9 through 12, Jehovah said to Moshe, Tell the people of Israel, when you cross the Jordan into the land of Canaan, you are to designate for yourself cities that will be cities of refuge for you, to which anyone who kills someone by mistake can flee. These cities are to be refuge for you from the dead persons next of kin who might otherwise avenge his kin and death by slaying the killer prior to his standing trial before the community. So here is a big key. By mistake. Okay? There's murder. Now, in the Ten Commandments, we have certain things, right? We have, thou shall not murder. Murder is a thought process. Here, Jehovah's saying, you can go to the city of refuge if you kill somebody by mistake. We have to investigate to see if it was an accident. You know, you're chopping wood and the, you know, the axe handle flies off or it slips out of your hand and it lands in somebody's forehead and they're dead. Okay? So there is a different story if it's... Tristan, look up, please. Okay? So here in verse 11, by mistake. Now the word mistake is shegaga. 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 That means sin, sin of an error or inadvertent sin. Inadvertent. See, this is the big key. Inadvertent. See, a lot of Christians like to say, well, there's no grace in the Old Testament. There's grace right there. 
There's Grace right there. Okay. Somebody's trying to call him. Uh, it was a group call. Okay. So inadvertent. Now, let's take a couple of looks at inadvertent because this is very important to understand. Turn back to Leviticus 4, verse 2. So this is, gets us a better picture of being able to go to the city of refuge by if there was a mistake made. Leviticus 4, verse 2. Now, we've already done this, but it bears... See, God's word is a tapestry. You need to understand all the parts. Leviticus 4, Viacra 4, verse 2. Tell the people of Israel... If anyone sins inadvertently against any of the mitzvot of Jehovah concerning things which, I sh which should not be done, if he does any one of them. Amen? So here, Jehovah had already spoken about an inadvertent error. He didn't know. You know, it's many people are learning the Torah for the first time. Okay? And you've been sinning against Jehovah. But he says, you know what? You made an inadvertent error. Here's what you got to do, okay? And there's a whole bunch of references in Leviticus 4 that talk about inadvertent error. You need to read it and in Leviticus 5 and Numbers 15, okay? So you have Leviticus 4, Leviticus 5, and, Levit and Numbers 15, okay? Where if you hurt somebody by accident, you know, the family wants to kill you immediately because, oh, you had it in from them. Jehovah's saying, we must investigate. We don't go by circumstantial information. There must be two witnesses. It has to be corroborated because emotions get hot when things like this occur. But Jehovah says, here, six days you work, six of the cities are refuge, then add the 42, okay? Here, if you're making an inadvertent error, you made it by mistake. We must, it says, and we, in the process we're reading, Numbers 35, verse 11, anyone which kills somebody by, mis excuse me, by mistake can flee until an investigation. Now let's go to 35, let's go back to Numbers 35, but Midbar 35, verse 16. Numbers 35, verse 16. Numbers 35, verse 16. However, if he hits him with an iron implement and thus causes his death, he is a murderer. The murderer must be put to death. Now, this is very interesting. An iron implement. When you'll, if somebody hits you with an iron implement, such as a, a rod, or something like that, and they cause your death, then that person must be put to death. Now, it's very interesting. With that thought, turn to Matthew 26. We're going to tie the two pieces together. Matthew 26, Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew 26, verse 2. Matthew 26, verse 2. Matthew 26, verse 2. We're going to tie the two pieces. I want to read the two scriptures and then put the puzzle together before we close. As you know, Pesach is two days away. Let me read it again. As you know, Pesach is two days away, and the Son of Man will be handed over to be nailed to the execution stake, or the cross. How was Yeshua put on the cross? By some nails. What were the nails made of? Plastic? They didn't have plastic back then. Titanium? No. What were they made of? Some sort of iron. Some sort of iron. So by Jehovah's law, because since Yeshua was innocent, our sins were put on him, the Gentile soldier, who, who put the body of Yeshua up on the cross? The Gentiles. Because the Jews had no power to kill. The Gentile soldier... The Roman soldier, the Roman Gentile soldier who put the nail in Yeshua's wrist causing his death because he hung up there in pain 
or even the soldiers who whipped Yeshua because what did the whip have in it? Glass and steel. So if you hit somebody with an iron implement, you are dead because, oh, I'm just following orders. Don't follow orders that are contradictory to Jehovah's Word. Well, I'm sorry that's all the time we have for this wonderful Arab Shabbat. I bid you a shalom, shalom, amen. Shalom. This is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman. I would personally like to thank you for tuning in to The Remnant's Call each and every week. You can listen to the full message on our website, bethgoyim.org. If you have drawn closer to the King of Kings, learned more about Him today, we are blessed. If you are blessed by these messages, please consider a donation to our ministry. You can go to our website, bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M dot org. And click on the donate button. You do not have to have a PayPal account to donate. All you need is a debit card. Once again, thank you very much for listening to The Remnants Call. If you have not taken your first steps to be born again, just ask God's help. Remember, it's His loving grace that has come to find you. No one is worthy or able to reach God, but God can reach us, and He's reaching out to you now. Just open your heart and let Him in. His arms are open, and the blessing of salvation and eternal life are waiting for you. Don't let it wait any longer. Shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and give you his shalom. Shalom. My name is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman, and I invite you to come to visit our congregation. If you are in the tri-state area, come out and visit with us on Shabbat. We are a congregation of Jews and Gentiles, living as one in the Messiah Yeshua. BGMC is a place of true worship. The focus never wanders from the Hebraic roots of our faith. Beth Goyim is rooted in the Word of God from Bereshit through to the book of Revelation. Messiah's strong words against man-made tradition are carefully recorded in Matthew 7. That is the reason we only follow the straight-up instructions found in Scripture, truly the way, the truth, and the life. If you're looking for a deeper walk with Adonai, come out for our Tuesday evening Bible study called Messianic Torah Time. Come, spend a day with us on any Shabbat. We start at 11 a.m. with the sound of the ancient Hebrew shofar. Next, we offer our King praise and worship in English, Hebrew, and Spanish. After worship, we review the headlines in the previous week's news from around the globe, especially news from the Holy Land, Israel. We don't just list the news headlines as current events, but we comb through the scriptures, searching for clues to understand what they mean and then to help pinpoint prophetically our current position on Adonai's clock. After digesting all that modern information, we leave the world behind as we journey with our Adonai deep into his eternal word not with just one or two scriptures, but usually seven or more scriptures. The spiritual nourishment and the richness of his kingdom become accessible to the ones who share this special time and seek them out. The day does not end there. Because Shabbat is so special to him, there is always so much more that our king desires to share. So instead of separating and leaving, we stay together as a family for potluck lunch and an afternoon study of our King's Word. We close this Shabbat together 
with the reading of the new week's parasha. That's the Torah portion. Even after those blessings, many of us just can't get enough. So the members bring prepared homemade foods to share while we all enjoy an uplifting movie together. If all that information is not quite enough, you can check out our website where you will find over 200 video teachings and biblical holy day studies. Under Messianic Torah Time, the Hebrew Roots button, you'll discover free studies on many, many different topics, including PowerPoint slide presentations. If Beth Goim sounds like a place you'd love to visit, but you live outside the Tri-State area, there is still a way to connect with us. We stream live on the internet on Tuesday, Thursday, and Shabbat. The website is www.bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. Our phone number is 973-338-7800 or 978-2-YESHUA. That's 978, the number 2, YESHUA. Shalom.